All right, well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is uh, the CONFO uh, webinar. We're gonna talk about supply chain vol volatility and uh, dealing with changes in forecasting. And we're gonna use a, a very specific example. Uh, we're gonna use an example from the world's largest semiconductor company, Intel, and something called their surface report, which is how they drive demand signals to their capital equipment suppliers, other suppliers and the trades. And so, uh, although this is very specific to the semiconductor industry, the principles that we're gonna share with you can apply to any forecasting situation and any volatile environment. And so we'll, uh, we'll go through that and we're gonna, uh, we'll go ahead and, and record this. It'll be up on the Confo YouTube channel. That is in the chat if you need to know where that is. And at the end, we'll stop recording and then we can have some more interactive discussion at that point. Um, but with that said, we'll go ahead and we are recording and we'll just get started and start walking through some of the content. So a little bit about CONFO. Uh, we provide consulting and support services that improve your operational and project performance. Uh, our primary focus is the semiconductor industry and supply chain issues. But we've done a lot of additional work supporting folks in software, manufacturing, and construction. If you go to our website, you'll see some of the services down below, uh, operations, support, and consulting. We do a lot of things to help you with uh, fab ramps, with tool installations, tool moves. Uh, we do enterprise project support and consulting, whether that's a uh, ERP implementation or a transformation program. And CONFO is the premier smart sheet solution provider for the semiconductor industry. And then finally, for those of you that are deeply involved in either fab ramps or tool installations, we do have customized software that is dedicated for that activity and really can make a difference. A little bit about us, if you don't know our history, we were founded in 2002. Uh, and as I say, we have a deep knowledge and a lot of experience in semiconductors, especially in tool installations and fab ramps. Uh, in fact, we've supported over 20,000 capital tool installs. Uh, we work with virtually every capital equipment maker in the industry, and we've supported uh, over seven fab and factory ramps and fab construction projects. You can see a sample of our client base there below in, in the listing of the logos. So for today, um, you know, I'm just curious if you have, and you can put it in the chat, I mean, do you experience any of these in your business? Uh, especially today with all the supply chain issues going on. You know, often if you're a supplier or you have to get things from supplier, you probably feel as if you're on a, a roller coaster, you know, and uh, you're probably experiencing some of the things that we see from volatile forecasts that uh, impact us because of resource constraints, um, you know, where things got to be delivered or started up. The location may change, the delivery date, the due date may change. You may actually have model changes on what's being asked for. And depending on your perspective, that could either be terrifying or frustrating, or you know, it may just be par for the course and you say, hey, I've got to enjoy the ride. And so uh, I love this graphic on the right um, you know, of a roller coaster ride. And we've got the lady on the left who uh, seems to be either terrified or, or she expresses joy differently. And the lady on the right is just enjoying the ride. So. Uh, with that said, we're going to show you some things specific to Intel that we think you can apply to your own situation and uh, minimize what might be terrifying or frustrating and, and help you better enjoy the ride as you deal with forecasting. And so I'm going to turn it over to Kirby Hicks. He's going to lead the discussion uh, and I'll, uh, I'll jump in and chime in uh, from time to time. But Kirby, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. All right, well, thanks for that introduction, Mike. And uh, thank you for all those who have been able to join us today. And like Mike said, we will, we will send this out to those who weren't able to make it and post it on our YouTube channel. Uh, the example we're talking about today is in fact uh, a, a particularly natty one when you really get into it and understand what all is involved. And with our experience with Intel, working for Intel and for Intel suppliers, we have a pretty strong understanding of the challenges involved with keeping up with the, the, the changes to schedules and the churn that goes on 
uh, with uh, the work and the tools that are installed in their wafer bag. And so as we go through this today, we're going to talk about their main communication tool for that information, which is the surface report. But, you know, if you're not directly involved with Intel, think about how the methodologies and the things we talked about today could apply to you and your situation. The tools we're talking about are very flexible and uh, readily available. So we're going to talk about, you know, what is the surface report. We're going to characterize that a bit. Then we're going to talk about why it can be viewed as a problem, uh, best leveraging the information in that report. And then we'll talk about our model uh, for uh, breaking it down and making it easy to get the information you need when you need it and understand it best for making management decisions. And then we'll point out that you too can do this. Uh, the tools are straightforward and uh, we'll go from there. Next slide, Mike. Okay, so what exactly is the surface and what does it do for you? In working directly with Intel, we were able to learn more about the communication process. It's, it is a, uh, a status of what's going on in the wafer fab relative to each supplier and their tool. When you pull that report, you're pulling it through the supplier portal for your product and the work that you have scheduled in the fab. That status report is updated on a weekly cadence. And if, you know, if, a, if someone in the fab doesn't get their status in before the weekend, then that status may lag until it gets updated the next week. So it's, uh, yeah, it can be that people feel like that status may not always be as accurate as they would like it to be, but we have found that with the tools we're going to talk about, that information is fairly accurate, and when it is not, it's good for you to be able to highlight what the difference is. And so the information flows, in our example, for capital equipment from the module manager tool owner up through construction. Construction then reconciles it with construction priorities and constraints. New requirements from the capital equipment side are added to the backlog, and some requirements are, are deleted on a routine basis. And so your backlog is churning, your schedule is changing, and it is a very sophisticated capability for Intel to keep up with the bigger picture of how to bring that fab up as quickly as possible. So, well, what's the problem with that? You might ask. The, the problem is, is there's just a, those, those, back up one more, uh, Mike. Problem is inherent in the amount of information that's there. And so you may have read this already. Fundamentally, you have hundreds of thousands of sales in this spreadsheet where line managers have to tediously go through and reconcile that with their master schedules, typically in Excel in the field. Hours and hours are spent doing this across the organization, and it is a process that's fraught with human error. Um, so we're going to show you how to speed that process up and keep up with the constant adjustments to the backlog, you know, what's in your backlog, and the adjustments to the schedule, the, the when you're supposed to do the work. Okay, now I'm on next slide. So the well, we have a basic automation. We have the surface report as a flat file that we pull into Power BI, and we use the analytics in Power BI to uh, make comparisons between previous reports and the reports you just uploaded. And from there, it goes into Smartsheet. That information goes into Smartsheet such that you can see all of the changes in tool adds and drops as well as changes to the schedules for existing tools and for those tools as well. Once it is in Smartsheet, then you have the ability to pull out management reports. So let's show that next build, Mike. Yeah, so we have shown that uh, we have a lot of flexibility. The, the immediate tactical advantage from Smartsheet is that line managers can look at what's important to them in, in uh, dashboards that are resident in Smartsheet. Uh, 
these dashboards typically, and we'll show you uh, one example of that, allow them to see at a glance the thing that's important to them every day when they get up and go to work. At a little higher level, we connect Power BI directly to Smartsheet, and that means that as changes happen in Smartsheet throughout the day from your, your people who are engaged with the process and the wafer fab or making updates or the weekly updates that come in automatically from Surface, you can see the impact of that on your business. Now, for even more sophisticated customers, you may want to have a view of what all of this is doing to your backlog two years out and beyond. And uh, in order to do that, we insert a project engine. One more click there, Mike. Uh, between Power BI and Smartsheet. That project engine can be uh, EMSP, you know, enterprise engine uh, of that capability, Primavera, or can even be uh, inside Microsoft Dynamics. We have experience with all three of those. Okay, next slide, Mike. So let's, let's uh, look at a little bit of what I'm talking about. We're only going to show you a few screenshots because there's an awful lot that we could show you uh, as far as capability and information that we've been using to support uh, companies in the semiconductor industry in general. The first thing that I mentioned before is that in Power BI, we immediately take a look at what are the tools added to your backlog this week and the tools that were dropped from your backlog this week. Tools could be added for a lot of reasons uh, to support the changing demand for, uh, for silicon, to support the changing demand for capacity for specific tools where they're experiencing some bottlenecks or whatever uh, it may be. Tools typically get dropped because of just the opposite. They're no longer needed to meet the capacity that they're now forecasting or Perhaps they're being dropped because the installs have actually been completed. Uh, but to be able to immediately see that, and, and we've seen scenarios where the number of tools added is over 50 tools in one week, or the number of tools dropped is equally as high. And to immediately be able to see the impact of that on your backlog uh, through either Smart Sheet, Power BI, or even more advanced capability out of your project engine has proven invaluable to senior management who's trying to manage their scarce resources to meet the customer needs. And the second thing that you'll see on this, uh, this screen is the impact of schedule changes. We set up master schedules in Smart Sheet for our users, and, and that data is distributed out to those master schedules automatically. Anytime a date changes in that master schedule, the individuals can see the, those changes by the highlighting functionality that's in Smartsheet. Those of you who are familiar with Smartsheet will also notice some other things happening in this little bitty screenshot. There's color coding capability that does not affect the, comp, the, uh, the, uh, the reports themselves and the data. Uh, so different managers can color code however they want. There's the ability to do conditional formatting. In this case, we gave our managers the ability to check a milestone as completed. Uh, and when that milestone is completed, it turns that date green. When the install is complete, the entire row turns green. And this helps them to be able to just update it on their phone. So they can just use the finger. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to, to talk about, sorry there, is uh, the output also goes in, out of Power BI. So all of the tools in this example that are in the various master schedule, schedules for the business unit <clears throat> are bucketed by their set start dates in the wafer fab. And that gives you basically a histogram of your tool load. Very basic, but it, it does tell our managers a lot and they like this report quite a bit. That's just one of very many that we pull from this environment directly into Power BI. All right, next slide, Mike, thank you. The, uh, the one thing I did show on that one slide are the Smartsheet dashboards. This is a, just a piece of a larger dashboard I thought might be interesting to you. When you have the information in this environment, remember you have automatic updates making sure that changes from Intel are 
updated with minimal human error, actually no human error. We also give the engineers the ability to lock out automatic updates if they have, if they're privy to better information from their customer, and that happens from time to time, and that can be turned off and on. And we watch that very closely so that it doesn't inadvertently get locked out on an ongoing basis. You also have comments that are inside the system that can be uh, highlighted as which ones are the most important and so on versus other ones. And in this case, you see those scrolling at the top of your your uh, your dashboard. And then underneath that, we like to keep an eye on your tool install Pareto, your behind scheduledness, if you will. There is behind scheduledness in tool installs, believe it or not. And even with the best visibility, there are a lot of a lot of things that can impact the schedule for getting the tool up and running in a way for fast. Uh, next slide. Also out of the this environment, if you elect to have a project engine in play, you can get detailed resource histograms. I just show one on the left is a histogram of resource loading across an entire enterprise. Uh, by business units, and then an example on the right is resource loading by skill level for an individual business unit. And you, you may be a smaller company and still want to have this. It's not that complicated to implement. Next slide, Mike. And just a comment on, on this. This, uh, for a one particular client, was uh, particularly valuable from that headcount planning perspective and deciding where do you invest with RFT talent and where do you invest with contingent workforce, you know, temporary folks or contracted out um, based on peaks and valleys and how you're going to deal with that. So significant financial uh, risk avoidance uh, when you're able to do these type of things. You know, and, and for one client, we actually, thanks, Mike, that's a good point. We actually uh, presented at a field service conference with them. We had a movie that showed how the backlog required a tremendous number of resources at its peak on, let's just call it, month six of the forecast. And then as you move toward month six of the forecast, we were able to show how that backlog leveled out and moved out over time, and that customer indicated that by watching that activity on a weekly basis and monthly basis, that he was able to save close to $7 million by delaying the hiring of contingent resources. Otherwise, he would not have been able to visualize that change based upon the spreadsheets that they normally review. Anything else to add to that, Mike? Uh, no, no. Other, and uh, okay. you know, the spreadsheets, to, to mention that spreadsheet, the spreadsheet process was very error prone. And it was about a six hour Excel exercise that was supposed to take place every week to deal with all the changes. And the reality was uh, each of the field managers just, you know, would, wouldn't do it that frequently because it was just too much work. And putting these technologies and these principles in place, now it's you know more of a push of a button. There's some things behind that, but uh, folks simply look at the output with the AI of Power BI and the power of Smartsheet. And you know what what used to take six hours is now let me take a look and make a judgment in ten minutes reviewing a report. So significant significant impact to the organization. Right. I think what we're doing is uh, digging in a little bit into that problem definition again. The, the amount of time saved by engineers rolling up data on a quarterly basis for business reviews and their managers uh, is, is significant as well. Uh, the, the information that's in Power BI, I'm sure a lot of you have used Power BI, can be readily exported into PowerPoint slides, and then you can customize your slide deck based upon that activity rather than worrying about whether the status in your uh, operations is correct. You know, a lot of people use project management at some level to manage their workers and their requirements 
for their customers in the customer's staff. Uh, but if that project doesn't have accurate status, then that project plan is not as valuable to accomplish what they're trying to do. All right, well, that, that really summarizes what we wanted, uh, ends what we wanted to cover today. And I want to talk just a little bit about what steps should you take if you wanted to participate in uh, streamlining your, your, your surface report or any other customer uh, requirements report in your organization. And, and the first step really is to assess the size of the problem. Do you see human error in your data? Do you see people spending a lot of time pulling information, calling their contacts in their regions and asking them for updates? Uh, a lot of churn trying to get that uh, organized in a way where it can be used for management decision making or not. This, this could be at a site level, multiple sites, or even at the enterprise level. So decide, you know, what is the scope of what you intend to do? Do you want to pull together information across multiple sites so that you can make better sense of it more quickly? Or are you a, a site level manager that would like to be able to run your operations better and have current status, allowing your people to update that status uh, from any device and automate updates to that status where, where it makes sense? And I'd add to that uh, on step number two, uh, what you're trying to accomplish there is have a good audit trail of that at each at any one of those levels so that when somebody questions your information, you're able to say exactly where it came from. Is your need, number three, a tactical need for managing at a site level, or is it more strategic because you're looking to, to forecast regular full-time hiring out two years as well as uh, contingent workers and so on? Once you've decided that, then you can begin with your basic automation. You would not want to begin pulling the systems together to do this until you know the scope of it so that you can architect it more effectively for the outcome you're looking for. Once you do get to four and you have that automation in place, then begin to distribute the results. The results go to your key stakeholders on a role based sign-on basis. So you're not overwhelming them with information they don't need. You're giving them the information that they specifically need to run their business. And you will get a lot of feedback when you do that. Trust me on that. It's, uh, you, know, you will find out a, a lot about your data when you begin to distribute that information that way. Once you stabilize at, at step number five, then you're ready to move on and in, improve the functionality, the kind of reports you generate, and, and basically the elegance of your overall system to continue to optimize it and improve the way you run your operation, generate management reports to support really good management decisions in a timely manner. So that's our six steps. All right, any, any additional comments to that? Any questions that anybody has for us? I know we're doing that on the chat, but I can't see it. Yeah, so um, We'll, uh, we'll stop the recording in just a second, and then we'll open up the general discussion. Uh, uh, if you'd like to explore this further one-on-one, -on -one, um, I've got a link in the chat where you can schedule some time with us. And when you get the uh, presentation deck, you can just click uh, on the hot link there, and it'll open up. And for those of you that are watching the replay, um, that link will also be in the comments. Um, uh, section underneath the video. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop recording here.